Welcome, and thank you all for joining us on this special day. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we would like to recognize a very important person who has contributed immensely within the Hispanic community. This year's honoree is Gustavo Mestas, Valeri Valeriano Cantz de Hu, and Jennifer Martinez Uloa, and myself will present Dr. Mestas' biography. Hello. Today we stand before you to honor Dr. Gustavo Mestas, the medical doctor for his dedication in the medical field as a physician in Sussex County, and to being an outstanding high Hispanic professional. His story is survival, unique challenges, and he wanted a better life for his family. Anytime we want to go through a extraordinary circumstance, he's become an uh, inspiration. The Dr. Mestas met made a decision to escape communist Cuba with his wife and two children in 1963. The captain and his good friend, Dr. Mesta, wrote a summary of the event of the trip. Dr. Mesta and his daughter, Dr. Ileana Smith, recorded brief description of the escape from Cuba with a story cop on night in 2008. The story was an inspiration. The morning edition recorded it. Let's listen to the story. Dr. Mestas was born in Havana, Cuba in July 16, 1926, where he grew up, graduated from high school, and finally medical school. Dr. Mestas was married with two children in Cuba and had his third child living while in the United States. He was an orthopedic surgeon while in Cuba, but changed his specialty to general practitioner when he came to the United States. It took Dr. Mestas approximately two years to complete his necessary schooling and tests before he moved to Georgia to his residency. In 1966, he moved to Delaware and worked at Stockley Center as resident doctor. It was said that all the nurses were in love with the new handsome doctor with platinum hair. Dr. Mestas worked at Stockley Center for about three years before opening his own practice in Millsboro, Delaware. In 1969, with the help of some friends, William Carter, Heron Lesher, and Jack Clues, Dr. Mestas' dream of owning his own practice came true. You could find Dr. Gustavo Mestas on 33 Great Street, Millsboro, Delaware. According to Raining Mill, who was Dr. Mestas' receptionist, then the office manager for 27 years, Dr. Mestas was a wonderful doctor. He split his hours from 8 a.m. to noon and from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So then the people could be seen without missing work. He was always thinking of others. In fact, Mrs. Mellon remembers during flu seasons after he first opened his office work until 11 p.m. to feed all his patients. No one who sat in the waiting room was ever turned away. Thursday was Dr. Mesa's day of where you could find him on a boat fishing. He even caught a huge marlin that was hung on the wall in his home. The most important thing in life is family and he especially loves his grandchildren. After they were born, he sold his boat and spent Thursdays with his grandchildren. They spoiled them with love, time, and the latest video games. Mrs. Mestas would even spend time in mud puddles with her grandkids, showing them how to make mud pies. Dr. Mestas loved all children, and even those who came into his office wore a smile and hugged him Im Im immediately. Dr. Mitchell, who was in, on the Hispanic Heritage Committee, was one of Dr. Mestas' patients and says to this day he was her favorite doctor and inspired her to learn Spanish. In fact, her entire family saw Dr. Mestas, including her grandmother and grandfather. 
Her grandmother, while happily married, always thought Dr. Mesos was handsome, just like the house at Stokely, nurses at Stokely, and had the best bedside manner of any doctor she had ever seen. In the early 90s, there was an extraordinary influx on Hispanic immigrants. Dr. Mesta was the only Spanish speaker doctor in Sussex County at that time. Many of the immigrants were working on the plants, which offers insurance after a certain amount of time. Dr. Mestas made sure he took the insurance, that kind of type of insurance they have, while many other doctors did not take the insurance. At that time, the waiting room was packed only with Spanish speakers waiting for Dr. Mestas. There, there are many stories of Dr. Mestas, generous person, a doctor that could be touched by your heart, and we will hear a couple in a couple seconds. Dr. Mestas never liked attention or honor it or get um, recognized for his work. One day, the Miss Boro uh, Cambers of the com Commerce brought him a placket of recognizing him for his 25 years of service. They wanted him to write an article with a picture on a newspaper, and he declined it. After they left, he put the placket on the closet and he went with his day. Today, Dr. Mestas is 89 years young and still lives in Misboro. His mind is still sharp and intact. He honestly enjoyed his iPad, receiving pictures from um, his grandchildren, Facebook, and of course, spending time with his family. According to Mrs. Maliam, after 27 years of working with Dr. Mestas, she never learned to speak Spanish, but she learned a very good and important lesson. Try to walk in someone's shoes before you judge them. Next, we would like Mrs. Bernice Milam to come up and share a few stories with you about Dr. Mestas. Mrs. Milam began working for Dr. Mestas in October of 1969 and stayed for 27 years. She, she still sees Dr. Mestas about once a week. Good afternoon. I'm not a speaker, but I am a crybaby, so I may get emotional. I'll tell you some of the stories, some of many. One time a gentleman came into the office that had lost his job from an illness and had been trying to get on disability for over a year, but he was constantly denied. One day he came in and he was very sick and he didn't have the money to pay Dr. Mestis. However, Dr. Mestis saw him and ended up writing a letter to the Social Security office for him. Dr. Mestis did not charge him. About three months later, the same patient came in and he had been approved and had gotten his first check. He came in to pay Dr. Mestis, but Dr. Mestis refused his money and the, doc and the man thanked him for helping him so much. One day, a, a Hispanic lady came into the office, and she had to be helped into the office by two people. She had been bitten by a brown recluse spider. The calf of her leg had a hole in it the size of a quarter. It was rotten, and the odor was bad from the infection. Dr. Mestis spent over an hour cleaning and removing the infected skin and packing it. He gave her an antibiotic, sent her to a specialist who saw her a few times and told her that her leg needed to be amputated. She came back to Dr. Mestis' office and he decided to try and help save her leg. This lady returned to Dr. Mestis every week for about six months. She was finally able to walk, and she came in one day with no crutches or a cane. 
The only thing that existed was a small indent in her leg, and it was a little sore. Dr. Mustis had saved her leg. The patient hugged him, the husband hugged him, and I cried because it was such an emotional experience for us all to see her better. This last story is one that I'll always remember, and I do get emotional with it too. One year, about two days before Christmas, a mother brought her little six or seven-year-old son into the office. The little boy was very sick with a high fever. When she came back to the desk to pay for the bill, she told her son in an angry voice that the money for the doctor was his Christmas present. Since he was sick, she had to pay the doctor's bill. She told him, she told the little boy that he would not be getting anything for Christmas. Dr. Mestis was standing behind her and he motioned for me to come down the hall. I had already taken the lady's money and I still had it in my hand. He took the money from me and he went to the little boy and he knelt down. He took that little boy's hand. He put the money in the hand. He folded the little boy's fingers around that money and he told him, you go buy yourself something for Christmas. And he looked up into that woman's eyes and he told her, don't you dare take this money from him. To this day, I can still remember Dr. Mestis kneeling down to that little boy so he could look him in the eye and tell him, you will get something for Christmas. Thank you. On behalf of the Hispanic Heritage Committee, it is our pleasure to acknowledge Dr. Gustavo Mestas as the first Owens Campus Hispanic Heritage Honoree for his compassion, dedication, love, and service to Sussex County, and for being an, an outstanding physician and role model for other Hispanics. Dr. Smith, would you please come up and accept this gift on behalf of your father? I'm so deeply honored, and um, I wish my father could be here to um, see how kind and how um, interested you are in what he would have just called his work, his job. He would never want recognition or attention, but I think he's an example. And I think this is what the recognition and hopefully many more can be about. It can be about giving examples to all of us. We all need role models. Um, I can tell you that my dad had the greatest influence in my life. He's always been my role model. And I'm really glad that now he can be yours and it can be something that we can pass on. Um, I'm really happy that you talked about the quality of generosity and compassion. Um, that's definitely a man who gives his life to helping others. So I want to thank you all. I want to thank those we honored last year, Las Hermanas, um, Ascension, Rosa, Maria, muchísimas gracias por estar aquí hoy. Um, they too are wonderful examples for all of us. Um, and it makes us all want to be better people. That's what it's about. So I've had a very emotional two weeks. Last week I went back to Cuba after 50 years. Um, 
and I was the only one who will ever go back from the four of us who escaped since the rest of my family except for my dad is deceased now. So it was a very meaningful thing to go back to my roots and it helped enrich me and complete me. So this is a very um, significant and emotional moment for me as well where this country uh, recognizes my father's achievements um, and, you know, cares enough um, to take the time to think about other people and what their lives have meant. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank our wonderful students, Jose, for having painted um, that painting, and Cindy Mitchell you know, for orchestrating that. I know Karen helped, and obviously Bernice. I mean, it's all about people. Life is about people and connecting with each other. And look at that connection. Uh, he came here as a doctor, and she was secretary receptionist. He's 89 today, and she talks to him just about every day and sees him every Wednesday. That's very special, and I thank you, Bernice. So thank you all very much.